everyone, welcome to the Hands Up for Trad Afternoon Show. My name is Simon Tumier, and again I'm broadcasting live from my Loch Lomond mansion on the Riviera. Today our guests are Brayback, who are celebrating 15 years as a band, and Ooh. Billy McDonald, who has been recently appointed as the new director of piping at the National Piping Centre. If you have any questions for these guys, please just say them in the comments. Hi everybody, how you doing? Hey! hey. <laughs> oh. What are you doing today? Same as every day. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been sharing a few bagpipe tunes there on the chanters. It sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't just say that. State lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before we all get started, we're going to listen, we're going to watch a video from our Glasgow correspondent, Daniel Hunter. 7 a.m. the usual morning line up. Start on the chores and sweep till the floor's all clean. Polish and wax, do laundry and... Morning. So, Simon's asked me to talk you through my day. He's only given us about a minute and a half. Luckily for him, I've not really been up too much for one reason or another. So, I usually start off my day a wee tune to get me right buzzed up for the day ahead. <laughs> then take a long hard look at myself in the mirror. Well Trips, as everyone knows, it's important to start off your day with a good breakfast. So follow me out in the kitchen and I'll show you what I make. So, I like to fry myself up a couple of Weetabix. And have a nice bowl of orange juice. He's in on a little secret now. So I know a lot of you have been wondering, how does Daniel keep himself so trim? How do his arms look so defined when he's bouncing about Tonto at the elephant sessions? Well, it's your time to find out. Introducing Daniel Hunter's secret shake. Off a banana. 50ml tonic. I know the good kind. A Barocca. Pack it a Walker's Prawn Cocktail. Ten Haribo Cola Bottles. A full bulb of garlic. And an egg. She lives in a flat in a massive mansion in the middle of King's Park. She's introduced me to a couple of foreign things. Number one, exercise. And number two, yoga. I'm going to show you my new move. I need to take my hat off. Glad I didn't film this last week, so I had one bald in it. Just spend my evenings playing my fiddle, watching a bit of Netflix, and of course, scalping Heart of Midlothian on FIFA. Right. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I never actually saw him drinking that shake. Oh, yeah. Maybe Look delicious. Looks delicious. Maybe get him yeah. back actually once he's drank it and see how he's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Brayback. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Simon. So you're celebrating 15 years as a band this year. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. That must be quite exciting. It was. No, it all started off like, we we had a, a lovely gig at Celtic Connections this year, the main auditorium, and 
uh, yeah, couldn't have gone any better. And it was uh, we had a, a load of pals with us. Um, Patsy and Donald came back as well to celebrate, which was lovely. And we had the the Trist, um Pipers, and we had uh, oh yeah, Finley was on that. Forgetting that, most of it was lovely. And uh, then there was a lovely thing as well with um, Shona Aitken, uh, Sue Ali and Patsy as well. So it was great. Could be celebration. And then we had a, uh, we managed to get a, a UK tour done in February and just at the start of March. So we thought we'd take the rest of the year off. <laughs> <laughs> so as a band I mean I know you've not all been in the band for 15 years but what is it like so for you and Callum you've been there for all 15 years what is it what's it like being in a band for 15 years have you had to change things <laughs> I'll let you and answer that one no on you go feel free to <laughs> Go for that it. Was, that was an example of how you work together after 15 years. <laughs> Pass the book. <laughs> um, things you have to change. Everything changes, yeah. Um, but, it, you know, I think I think when you are in a, any kind of group for that amount of time, you have, to, you have to always make changes for the better good, you know. Like, you can always adapt and uh, learn from new things. And we're having to do that right now for sure. Um, just finding new ways to do things. Uh, you can't you can't kind of give up on things. You've got to find new ways to move forward. So I guess that's what we've done through the years, and we're still doing it. I mean, one of the things about being in the band fifteen years, you've actually made five albums. Is that correct? Six, I think. Six. Six. My goodness, what were the albums? Can you name them? This part of the quiz. <laughs> 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 Go on, Ewan. There we started with the big spree, and then desperate battle of the birds, <laughs> and then Bown, and then Urlars, then Astard, and then we just did frenzy of the meeting. Ah, so that's it. Well done. Well, that's extra point nice, for you Megan. for the later quiz. Thank nice. You. <laughs> <laughs> now, making six albums is is definitely not an easy feat, you know, because you passed the difficult third album quite a while ago. How do you keep coming up with new ideas? I mean, because obviously Friends of the Meeting, which won Album of the Year at the Scots Child Music Awards, and you also won Album of the Year with a star in 2016 at the Child Awards as well. Both very innovative albums. Do, do you go into the studio with a plan? Maybe James Lindsay can answer this. Um, to, to yeah, to an extent, like we generally have a like a kind of concept or theme that we that we roll with. Um, but I think every every album we're just kind of trying to refine the sound. Like we're heavily influenced by like the old traditions the the Peabrock and and the Gaelic song and we like to take these and like yeah just keep trying to innovate a wee bit uh, that's, yeah because oh, it isn't because it isn't easy are you writing most of the tunes for the albums yourself probably it probably more our own tunes now um but we still we, we like to keep keep the tradition on on each of the records so it's maybe like a 60 40 split or something oh that's amazing and uh so and megan you've obviously you doing the stepping and you're uh singing in gaelic as well on the releases yeah it, um there has been a bit of step dancing in the last on one of the albums anyway uh, i can't remember which that one was but yes, yeah, it's, it's good to, I don't know, try and kind of put as much as our of our live performance into our studio recordings, do you know? That's what we try and aim for a lot as well, um, which can be quite hard. But uh, And I, I suppose as well that we, we've often, um, in fact, we have every album, we've changed up our producers, 
which kind of brings another element to things. You know, the over the years of it, Chris Drevers, um, Greg Lawson, had Eamon Durley in the last one, and it's and then working with different engineers as well, like Ian Hutchison stuff. Everyone always brings kind yeah. of different uh, their own. Uh, ideas and you know it kind of always creates a new spark and creates something new for us to to work with i suppose oh, that's amazing well before we see some of your video let's see we've got quite a lot of people from all over the world watching we've got fergus from ontario in canada uh, Debbie oh. from Pumbara in canada gareth hey. from Wuhan, mary ann in sweden oh jamie hunter from orkney and uh, Wormit, we've got Jamie, oh, who else have we got? Dumbvegan, hello, Anne. And we've got Bob Christie from Cork. Gavin from Dundee, I oh, don't want to miss anyone. Oh, hello, Alana from Israel. And oh, Grant, he's on the Fife Riviera. And John <laughs> Struthers in the Isle of Man. And finally, Steve Watching from the north of Derby. Hi, thanks very much for watching. Guys, well, you're going to join us to watch a lovely video of Knees Up. Can you, just before we watch it, can you... Tell us what this video is, because it seems to be telling a story. And you're in it, Ewan. Could you tell us about the video? Yeah, well, <clears throat> the video was actually originally made by some friends of ours, um, and it was a CalMac commissioned video, which tells the story of uh, a, a guy going making making some family time, basically, to, to go on, a, on a, an adventure with his, with his dad. Um, so they released that video and then um, because they used our, our track for it, they allowed us to make a, a, an edit of it, uh, a, a kind of, to make a music video for us, I, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of scenery um, from areas that we know well and uh, through Uist and Barra and uh, uh, Sky. And, uh, yeah, I make a little, a, a little cameo cycling up the Kerrang which uh, was horrendous, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's, it's uh, it was it was made by um, Andy McCandlish, uh, uh, this way up media. So it's uh, yeah, they, I think they did a great job. Oh, it's a lovely video, and I would tell everyone to go and check it out. Actually, but before we watch the video as well, um, if anyone wants to find out more about you guys, you can go to Braybach.com. And all your albums are there and they can contact you and find out where you're going to be next. Anyway, here's Knees Up. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Um, before we move on to talk about Man's Ruin, because well, as we have two members of Brayback online, it would be a pity not to talk about that brilliant band that we don't see enough of anymore, Man's Ruin. But quickly, a whole hello to Derek McDonald from Cumbernauld. He doesn't think it's so impressive, but still pretty cool. So I got married there. And uh, hello from to Joseph from Swindon in Wiltshire. Doogie's Melvin from just round the corner from Finlay. Oh, I like Doogie. And Dagmar from Germany and uh, Vincent from Leeds. Amazing. Fantastic. Well, guys, Man's Ruin. Uh, when did this band start? Well, I suppose it started... Um, I actually did a, a solo project. It was, it was my my solo album back in 2009, uh, which kind of had a crossover to, to everything that was on it. It was quite a lot of funk crossed over with folk music, I suppose. Uh, and that album was called Man's Ruin. And essentially after that album was finished, there was no band uh, that existed. So I, so I just thought it would be nice to go out and play some of the music live and maybe write new stuff. So we started a band and myself and James Lindsay and Innes Watson, Scott Donald and Hamish Napier formed the band Man's Room. So that, that must have been around 2011, I would imagine, James? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and a, a wee memory popped up on my Facebook today saying it was six years since our last gig. <laughs> <laughs> our last official gig. We've had a couple of unofficial ones, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Secret, underground. Yeah. And uh, you made uh, an album, and was it 2013? You made the album Working for the Man. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, there was a little uh, a little single we put out then. Oh, was that um, the single? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, and the the last album was Health and Safety. Oh yes, that's right. With the yeah. yeah bright yellow sign. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was great. It's... And then I think was it 2013? You played at the Trad Awards. You finished off the night. Yeah, that was great fun. Yeah, you had everyone up dancing. Well, we're going to watch a, a clip of one of your videos, which, again, I would tell everyone to actually go and look at. In fact, everyone should go and check out your Bandcamp page at mandruin.bandcamp.com. I totally advise it. I bet the video just looks so much fun and it still makes me smile after all these years. Here it is. <laughs> Not too bad, Simon. How's yourself? Oh, it's good. It all seems to be going to plan anyway. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it all seems to be going to pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's still plenty of time for that. <laughs> anyway, so you have just been appointed the the new director of piping at the National Piping Centre. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Aye. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I don't officially start until the 1st of June, um, but I'm, I'm still kind of, I'm doing bits and bobs to kind of hopefully try and hit the ground running a bit with that. And it's obviously a bit of a kind of strange time for it all to happen with the, with the lockdown and all that. But it's, um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm kind of 50% terrified and 50% excited about the prospect. Yeah, because, I mean, you've also just been made the Artistic Director of Piping Live as well, the Piping Live Festival. Yes, all right, same, you know. Double success. 
Well, I'll get, get appointed one week and then have to cancel the festival the following week. So it's not exactly a great track record so far. But. <laughs> oh, you've been piping like this. It's a fantastic festival. And you've obviously been heavily involved in the programming for many years. Since the start, yep. Um, 2004 was the first one. And uh, I've been kind of involved from, from the get-go, really. So it's, it's amazing. It's been great to see it kind of grow and develop how it has and you know we, we had some great stuff planned for this year and unfortunately that's that's not going to happen but you know we'll just have to look forward to the next year and um just try and make it even bigger and better i guess so can you tell the people watching this what the national piping center is um it's a piping school essentially we have a premises in mcfather street right at the top of hope street and we've also now got premises in the, the West End of Otago Street, um, which was formerly the College of Piping. Um, and we run, I mean, essentially we teach pipes, but that covers a huge range of different projects that we do from individual lessons off the street, night classes, HNC, uh, degree course in conjunction with RCS, um, a semester course with Glasgow and Edinburgh University, um, we've got PhD students, master students, Pipe and Life Festival, the National Youth Pipe Band of Scotland. Um, you know, it goes on. We've got a lovely restaurant and, and hotel as well, and we do lots of different functions. And um, so, I mean, there's a huge team of people involved that that kind of make it happen, and it's a, and it's global as well because we do outreach programs in Italy, America, Germany, all over the place. So we're we're kind of based in Glasgow, but I guess we've got a kind of international reach and we're, we're all over the place doing stuff. Are you still head of the piping degree at the Royal Scottish Conservatoire? Uh, I am until June, yeah. What's so right, yeah. yeah. So I'm seeing this term out, the, the last term, and then um, we'll have to find someone else to do that oh, as I go into the kind of director role. Oh, interesting. Right, so of course, uh, I mean, oh, you've got all this admin in your life, which you must love. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> delighted by all that. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, you are a, a, a fabulous piper, and one of the, the I suppose you were a real innovator with small pipes within bands and playing them with drums and bass and everything like that. And also, your Highland piping. Uh, I know everything's been cancelled, but are you still getting to play lots? Aye, still, still playing loads. Um, I guess just lots of different projects. I don't have a, have a band as such. I do lots of kind of different projects. There's a trice thing that you mentioned. Um, I do stuff with Chris Stout a, a fair bit, kind of on occasions. Um, I write for different projects. I've maybe produce some live shows, and um, I go to Estonia, Italy, out to the States every year. So I'm still got a, a good good play out and. Um, I guess my main frustrations are that it's the time kind of thing. You know, I've got I've got a book ready to go, or I'm kind of working on a book, and I want to do some new recording. But it's just trying to fit all that in the usual kind of time restraints, you know. Yeah. Well, listen. If anyone wants to find out about the piping centre, they can go to thepipingcentre.co.uk, and you can find out about all that what you can do. It's a, it's an amazing organisation. There's so much going on. But anyway, I think we might be ready for the quiz. All right. <laughs> so, just for the viewers at home, we asked everyone to uh, bring in their own buzzers. Can we? If, can everyone play their buzzers? <laughs> oh, three pipers, you know. <laughs> Oh, quite fancy. Right, good. That, that was like that's a really fast one to work as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll be pressing it and then everyone will have answered oh, before your sounds. Furiously <laughs> pressing it. Right, are we, are we ready then? Here we go. Who won the 2019 World Pipe Band Championships? Oh. Oh, I think that was you, Ian. Oh, thanks. That that would be Inverary. Are they allowed to go with that title? Piping Centre Director? <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that's a bit shabby, you, to be honest. <laughs> I think we need the full title there. 
I think it's in Venere and District. District, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. cause it's worth having fun. Oh, uh, Callum. Half a point. Callum, your <laughs> wife has just said, come on, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we she can She needs to get the dinner on. We can actually see <laughs> that online. Hold on, can we see it? Can you see it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> she wants me to get the dinner cooked. <laughs> right, question number two. What is the missing word in this album title? Ah, oh Scottish fiddle. I've no idea, but I'm going to go collection. Nope. Yes. I don't know, but I love. No, right. Well, I'm going to give you a wee clue. Okay. This person was the original member of Braybach. Oh, well, it's so it's Patsy. A really lovely collection of children. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll be so what? happy when she watches this. <laughs> No, Lots of fiddle tunes. It's a glint of oh, Scottish oh. fiddle. Patsy Reed's original Braybacks member. Her Sorry, Patsy. Solo album the was, book. It's a third solo album and it's definitely worth getting. PatsyReed.com Right. Woo-hoo. Question Woo. three. So it's still 1-0 to Ewan. What year did classic player Ingrid Henderson win the BBC Radio 2 Young Tradition Award. Callum? I really don't know, but I'm going to say 1999. Wrong. Megan? It was 1968. She is definitely younger than she looks. Finley? 1997. Oh, man, you're all so far away. Uh, what? You 2003. All right, I'm, I'm going to say it was 1993. I'm going to put you all out of your misery. It was 1990. What? Surely I was the, I was the closest. Because uh, Ingrid was 13 when she won that award. Because uh, I won it in 1989, and I wasn't 13. But we both she went was- to Vancouver. Me, you, your mum, Megan, your dad, and Alan all went to Vancouver Folk Festival together. <laughs> and they all wore Brilliant. blue shell suits. <laughs> yes. I've seen the photos. No naked near them. Was right. Megan there, Simon? No. No. <laughs> right, it's a bit of a poor quiz showing so far. Question four. Name the first bagpiper in the band, the Tanaho Weavers. <laughs> Finley. Ian McLeod. Alan McLeod. Alan McLeod. Alan McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> right. <laughs> One all. <laughs> right, here's a final question. How many total band members are in Braybach plus Finlay McDonald and Chris Stout and Man's Ruin? <laughs> Um, well, exactly right. Well what? done, Callum. <laughs> yes. Congratulations, you are a total genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. So Callum wins the quiz two one. Um, James won by hitting his button and his keyboard, and nobody heard a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks to Creative Scotland for helping Hands Up for Trad to make this programme and uh, we'll be back on Monday at 2pm with the Canaris Quintet see you the next time nice one Simon see you guys thank you, thank you.